Hey everybody, welcome to this, my second of two videos on the Canon EOS Rebel. In the first video, we looked at the camera in general. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use it in detail. First thing we're gonna do with this camera is because it can do nothing whatsoever without a battery. So I'm gonna show you how to change the battery. It's on the underside here. Just open up the battery chamber like that. And it uses a two CR5 battery which doesn't usually shoot out quite like that, so that was a surprise. Anyway, 2CR5 battery, you can kind of see by the shape of the chamber that the battery is going to have to go in this way with the contacts facing into the camera. Drop it in place, and there we go, we've changed the battery. Next thing let's do is mount and unmount lenses. Really simple function, all you have to do is push, if you have a lens on the camera, push the lens release button, and turn counter or anti-clockwise until it stops and release. Now you can grab your other lens, find the lens index there and the lens mounting index there, line them up, turn it clockwise until it clicks, and now you've mounted a new lens. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to load and unload film. So you open up the film back, grab your film, any 35 millimeter film will work. Drop it into the back of the camera pull it out that way. So you want to have the leader extending to at least the index there. Close the film back. And when we turn it to any one of the modes, the camera pre-winds the film all the way to the end. So right now what it has done is it has taken the film off of the out of the cassette and wound it all the way to the end over here. So if you were to open your, your camera back now, it would ruin all of your film. Film can record light exactly one time in a controlled manner with a proper shutter speed and aperture, or in an uncontrolled manner by doing something like this, where all of the photons can reach it and that would wipe out any images on here, or make it so that this film cannot record any more images in the future. So once you load your film, Keep your film back closed until you are done shooting it. Now we're going to go through, what you're going to do is you're going to go through your day, and you're going to shoot, this is a very loud camera. You're going to shoot all of your film, and when you finish shooting your film, it will rewind it automatically into the cassette, and then you take your, your used cassette out, put it in your pocket to develop it or send it off to a lab, and then put your new cassette in. That's how loading and unloading the film works. After you unload the cassette, just grab another one and pop it in if you would like, or if you are done shooting for the day, just turn your camera off and you're ready to not be shooting anymore for the day. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the flash and how to use the flash. The flash on this camera is only with the hot shoe right here. And the sync speed is 1 90th of a second. So if you are shooting in manual mode, and you want to use the flash, you need to be at 1 90th of a second or slower. So the way that the flash works on this camera, and all cameras, is you have what's called a focal plane shutter. We saw that when the camera back was open. And the, the camera takes a picture by opening the first curtain, and then the second curtain closes. And then when the, the shutter curtains advance, a reset as the film is advanced. This, the camera's shutter speed is not changed by how quickly the curtains move. They always move at the same speed, but by the gap between the curtains. So if you take a 90th of a second exposure, the first curtain opens, and then the entire film plane is exposed to light for about a 90th of a second. The flash triggers when that first curtain finishes its travel, and then the flash, uh, the second curtain closes. So then they reset. Let's say you take a picture that's a 22 second picture. First curtain opens, flash would trigger when that first curtain opens, the, the, light would, the film would stay open to the light for 22 seconds, and then the second curtain closes and then they reset. Okay, this, the fastest shutter speed on this camera is 1 1,000th. So at 1 1,000th, the first curtain would open and then the second curtain would come in right behind it and there'd just be a sliver of space between them. When the first curtain finishes its travel, the flash will trigger, and only the space between those curtains will be illuminated by the flash because the rest of the scene 
will be blocked by the curtains. And so it will be dark on your, on your film. So that's why if you're using a flash, you have to have it set to 1 90th of a second or slower. In every mode that uses a flash, except manual, the camera will automatically do that. So I'm going to ask you to turn your head to the side here so we can see this a little bit. But let's say you're in manual mode, and you're going, or any mode realistically, and you're going to use a flash. Okay. Right here, pretending this is a flash and not a studio light, this is the worst possible way to have a flash on your camera. When you, sh you trigger your flash, it will, the light will shine out this way, reach your subject, back to your lens, and your subject will look flat and waxy, and it's an unflattering look for any subject, even candles. So some basic tricks you can use to improve your flash photography with this camera. When you buy a flash, get one that has an articulating head. So you can point the flash up at the ceiling, bounce the light to the ceiling, back down to your subject, and back to the camera. And that works really well because when we see something, it is always lit from above whether it is the um, sun or a ceiling light or whatever it is that's above us shining light on us, we're used to seeing things lit from above and that looks natural to us. So having lighting that is not from above is unnatural to us. And also, if you don't have a ceiling above you, if you get a lens with an articulating head, you could use a wall or a reflector or something like that, an articulating and rotating head to bounce your light. So realistically, if you're, when you use a flash, the worst kind of flash you can get is one that just points light forward. So um, if you're buying one for this camera, try to get one that has some movement in the flash portion of it. Next thing let's talk about are how to use the different shooting modes on this camera. And we're going to go over here to the mode dial. We're going to go through all of these. And we're going to start here at sports and go out to ISO. So these ones here in the gray are called the scene shooting modes. And what they do is they have a pre-programmed set of parameters for different scenes. The, the running dude is sports. It works best with telephoto lenses. It gives you the fastest shutter speed that it can give you to freeze motion and the widest aperture so that it can have a fast shutter speed. Oh, the flash should not fire if you have one mounted on your camera with this mode. This is close-up mode. The flash could fire if needed if your subject is backlit or in the dark. This mode is best used when you have a subject that is at your lens's minimum focusing distance. So if you have racked your focus out or your autofocus is racked out all the way to the closest focusing point, that's when this will work the best. Landscapes are best suited for wide-angle lenses or the wide side of your kit zoom. And basically what this does is this uses the smallest aperture it can and no flash. And the goal of this is to have something very near as well as the very distant part of the landscape in focus. Portrait mode uses a, an aperture that will get your subject in focus and give you a blurry background. The flash might fire if it's needed with this mode. With this mode you can set it up to be successful by having a lens like a, a fast 50 like this, or a telephoto-ish lens, or using your kit zoom at the long end of the zoom range, and having your subject stand 8 to 10 feet in front of a background. That will help give you a blurry background. This next mode is green box, and what that does is take over complete control of everything. You have no control at all with the way this camera works in green box mode. It will do all the thinking for you. Lock turns off the camera. Now, P, T, V, A, V, and M are your standard shooting modes. And P stands for program mode. Program mode, the camera will determine the best aperture and shutter speed for you. If you hold down this button here and rotate the command dial, you can program line shift to have some control over your exposure. The program line shift will, should reset after you take a picture. No, it doesn't. Oh, interesting. So if you're going to program shift, just remember to adjust your, um, to readjust to the, the center after you take a picture. TV stands for time value, also called shutter priority mode. You can see in your LCD screen, the shutter speed is selected. 
if you adjust the command wheel on top here, it will give you a different shutter speed. So what happens is you pick the shutter speed and the camera will pick the best aperture. AV stands for aperture value or aperture priority, and it's the exact opposite. Your aperture is displayed over here, and you use the command wheel to adjust the aperture, and the camera will pick the best shutter speed for you. Manual focus, you are in control of everything. The camera will do the shutter speed and aperture you tell it to, and it doesn't care whether or not the images turn out well. So the success or failure of your exposure is up to you. There's a light meter in the LCD up there that you can see. What I'm going to do is adjust the shutter speed, see if we can get that indicator back. Nope, it's not, okay, it's not going to give it to us. Interesting. The problem is just that it was way outside the bounds of what we could do. Okay, so you can see on the LCD screen there, there's an exposure meter on the bottom, and then there is the, uh, a little indicator beneath it that tells you whether you are properly exposed, if it's in the middle, or underexposed to this side, overexposed to this side. If you rotate the command wheel, oh, and this display, by the way, is in your viewfinder, it's the exact same thing. If you rotate the command wheel, you, ex you change the shutter speed. To change the aperture, you push down on this button that's closer to the viewfinder, and now rotate the command wheel, and then you adjust the aperture. DEP is auto exposure depth of field priority. Now what this does is give you an aperture that is the best to have all of your subjects in focus. So let's say you're standing over here with a camera and you've got a row of subjects lined up like this. And this is not to scale obviously, but you've got a bunch of people here standing up against a wall. And this person here is way closer to the lens than this person over here. So you would need different focus points to get both of them in focus unless you stop down. What DEP does is select the best aperture to get all of these people in focus. Or if you just have people here in this range, same thing, it will pick the best aperture to get these people in focus if you are only using part of the wall. So basically, DEP is looking to give you an aperture that, that will get all of your subjects within the uh, image's focus area. This is self-timer. and. Let's turn that off. Nope, that's not going to turn off. With self-timer, it counts down from 10 seconds and displays the amount of time left in the LCD, beeps the entire time very loudly, and then we'll take a picture after the self-timer has finished. ISO allows you to override the film's DX codes or use film that doesn't have them. So if you have the DX code here, the camera will know this is, that this is 400 ISO film. If you come into here, you can now say, actually, I want to shoot this as 800 and push it a step when I develop it. Or I want to shoot this as 100 and pull it two stops when I develop it. And you can do that. Or if you're shooting boutique film that does not have a DX code on it, you can manually set the ISO that way. So the next thing let's do is let's put everything together and take a picture with this camera. And then we're going to do double exposures. So in every mode except manual, it's pr pretty much easy. With program through, the, through sports, the camera's going to do all the thinking for you. You just have to push the shutter button or have to press the shutter button until you get focus. And then it will take the picture. With shutter priority, you adjust the shutter speed you want and just make sure that you're going to get a shutter speed that you can hand hold steadily and that is within the available light and aperture range. With aperture value, you just select the aperture you want and then the camera will tell you what shutter speed or not. Yeah, it does. In the viewfinder, the camera tells you what the shutter speed is. And then, uh, oh, and there as well. And then you just let it focus or focus it yourself manually and take the picture. In manual, you adjust the settings as we saw, and in DEP, also automatic. Really simple process designed to be a very quick shooter. Let's say you want to take double exposures. You can do that with this camera. In every mode but manual, it's going to be really easy. First thing you do is hold down both of these buttons on the back, and it will bring up this menu, and then you just rotate 
the dial until you get the number of exposures you want up to nine. Let's just do a double exposure here. And then you dial in the double exposure. What's gonna happen is you will take two pictures, it will count down, and then it will advance the film. So that's the mechanics of how you do it. With a double exposure, if you have your film in the camera, and 1 1 25th and f5.6, let's say, is a proper exposure, if the frame receives that amount of light, that's a proper exposure. If it receives that amount of light twice, that's too much light. And it's gonna be what's called a thick, a dense, or a dark negative. Those are three words that mean the same thing, which is that the film had too much light. The consequence of that is that in printing in the dark room, your prints will take a lot longer and they'll have lower contrast. With digitizing or scanning, they'll have more noise and lower contrast. So a good practice for multiple exposures is to reduce the light for each exposure. And in program, shutter priority, and aperture value, what you do with that is push the button closer to the viewfinder down and give yourself one stop less light. This will cut the amount of light in half so that your two exposures will now be properly exposed on the same frame. Just like that, multiple exposure ends. Make sure you reset this to your middle ground so that you don't underexpose the rest of your images on your film and continue shooting. With manual mode, all you have to do is adjust the shutter speed or aperture yourself. If you're going to do that, 1 1 25th of a second, half as much light is going to be twice as fast a shutter speed or 1 2 50th. These are fractions. So 1 250th is half the time of 1 1 25th and half the light. Okay, but you want to have that be your shutter speed. You can also do that with the aperture, f8. This is also a fraction. It's a different scale, but f8 is one stop different from f6, which is half the light. 1 2 50th is one stop difference in 1 1 1 25th. And then at, if you're in manual mode, just uh, every time you take a shot, you have to reset or theoretically reset two different settings anyway. So there you go. And that, is that really everything? We have done everything with this camera that we can do. That is the Canon EOS Rebel, or 1000, one of the original in the Canon EOS lineup, and the first of the Canon entry-level cameras. So um, they're older cameras today. There's not a huge market for them. They are very inexpensive. But realistically, they can still do whatever you need them to do and take whatever, almost whatever kind of picture you want so they're, they're good cameras and there's a lot of good lenses you can slap on the front of them to take some pretty good photos with. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.